Welcome to Star Citizen, a game that you've probably heard a little about before, maybe? It's been in the news a lot, not least for raising over a hundred million dollars at this point, for this idea of basically a star universe, a ability for you to become a citizen of the stars. Although this doesn't look like a universe, this looks like a small industrial bunker. That's because it kind of is. This is the self-land hangar, as you can see it says on the floor. This is the starting hangar. If you were to go and buy a starter package right now, this is the hangar you would have. The ship that you bought as part of your package would be right in the middle there. At the front end, I guess this is the front, there's a lift here that goes up to these rafters. So if you had a massive ship, you could see and walk around it. You have this kind of plinth thing, which if I press F to interact with, you can change how your character looks. I believe this is all set to change. There are limited options, including one that looks a little bit Darth Vader. So let's just go with that one. So yes, if I now press insert, I go into third person. So you can see this is a full 3D environment. There's also this small pod here. And this small pod we will look at in a minute. It essentially serves as like a little game within a game, a kind of simulator. But the main reason for this hangar is, and you'd argue almost the main reason for a Star Citizen itself, is for almost fetishizing these ships. These are the ships that you can buy now. They will be put into your hangar. They are a variety of prices, I should say, but we'll talk about money in a minute. Both of these ships are more of the military fighters style. This front one here is a Mustang Delta. You can see it's in a sort of drab paint thing. And one part that you'll notice is this second ship. Ignore the fact that that kind of... <laughs> that interface thing jiggles around there. These are working models, although this is essentially a car showroom. These are working models. So if I press F on that use point, the side of it opens up. I walk up to the ladder again and press F. That dude climbs up and gets inside the ship. The reason why I decided to have a look at Star Citizen was because basically I was looking at buying Elite Dangerous. Then realized there was a an expansion coming up and I didn't really know what that meant. I was talking about it with a few of my friends that I play Planetside 2 with. And they had mentioned that they were really into this. And I'd heard a bit about it, a little bit sceptical, had seen some slightly odd articles about apparently former developers who had made some statements in the public or something, so I didn't really know what to expect or anything. But I started to research it a bit, saw this sort of physical nature of the world. This isn't like a HUD that is just put in front of you when you buy a new ship. This feels like a real thing that I own. And it kind of reminds me of stuff in Dirty Bomb or especially in Counter-Strike, where you can do weapon inspections. This is essentially a crazy level of weapon inspection. And that's for every one of these ships that you can currently order. This Mustang Delta at the front, if I just go underneath it, press F, the little drop down ladder, press F again. My intrepid dude climbs up inside. This is where it gets a little bit buggy here. If I then point him towards the seat again, press F. He walks forward. It's a bit dark, I admit. And he sits himself in this seat now. You can see slightly weird reflection, but there you go. There's the dude inside. You can swing the camera around. And isn't this cool? 
you're probably saying, you know what, this doesn't look like a game. And, you know what, this part, I'd argue, isn't. It's about people who love space and ships and that kind of stuff. But what we talked about just a minute ago was a small pod in the corner. So let's go and have a look at that. Well, this little pod here essentially serves as a game within a game and has allowed the developers, in effect, to sort of compartmentalize. So if I press the use button on this, the dude gets in, this little pod, and what we get is something called electronic access. At the moment there are two options, one of which I cannot select, which is Star Marine. The other one is Arena Commander. So imagine this as a space sim of Star Citizen. So if I say I want to play Drone Sim, there's free flight, so there's nothing, no bad guys around. I can select Broken Moon, which is one of the essentially maps. I can select one of the ships I have. Let's just go with that nice Mustang Delta. And then let's just hit launch. So, welcome to free flight mode. We are, in fact, in that map. That broken moon map. If I hold Alt, I can now look around. So this may look like a big area. In actual fact, it's like a small bubble in which you can play. I'm getting around about 32, 30 frames a second on my computer. My computer is not that new. Yeah, it's not great in terms of performance. So this is just me using mouse and keyboard to move around. You can see it's exactly as you would imagine a space sim to be. It's not to shoot that, but you can shoot the weapons. There are in fact some rockets on this ship as well. If I bring it to a halt, press third person again, press it again, hold down look. There's a really nice feeling of this ship being in the world. There's a vastness of space feeling that I think the game captures incredibly well. There's the dude, you can see him. And <laughs> there's the curvature of that moon. Pull the camera right back, and there he is. Actually, interestingly enough, I'm actually getting around 60 frames there. So even drawing the ship as well, it's, it's doing all right. Just like in that hangar, everything is physicalized. So, just like in that hangar, if I exit the seat, I can do that as well. So now I'm stood in the back of the ship, like I was in the hangar, right? Except I can then open that door. and get out. So this is the EVA part of Star Citizen. Yeah, I'm just that bloke. So the scale of the game suddenly becomes sort of really interesting. This isn't just about you, you know, you press a button, suddenly you're inside the ship, and you fly off. You get somewhere, and you want to trade something, or anything like that, from, like, any other space game that you've seen a thousand of. You know, but none of it feels real. Well, in first person here, this feels really quite precarious. There's this massive planet below me. There's my ship that's rapidly getting smaller and smaller as I... EVA away, but I think this does a great job of making this feel like a real environment and a real thing to be doing. So we just line ourselves up, back on board the ship. 
Okay, so, full disclosure, <laughs> that didn't work. I couldn't get back on board the ship. So what I've done instead is I basically reloaded this simulation, this arena commander, with a different ship. This is the Aurora. This is one of the most popular starter ships. This is one of the variants. This is the Aurora MR. I believe is the cheapest option possible. And it's a sort of good all-round starter ship. A couple of guns on the front. Docking areas at the side. And basically, it's a sort of jack-of-all-trades, basically. So let's go back inside, using the third person again. And just like the Delta, or the Mustang rather, you can move this around. You can see that the physics here have got a bit of momentum to them. So if you turn quickly, this doesn't fly like a plane, basically. If you throw the ship around, it slides. And then all of a sudden the engines push it forward again. So there's a fair bit of skill in piloting these well, which I think is really great. But again, there's no bad guys here to worry us at the moment. And also, like all space games, there is no up. So... If you roll it over, you know, there is no right way to be facing. You can do whatever you want. So let's just park it like that. Let's exit the seat. And I can show you this Aurora a bit more. So, this here is a bed. That is how the designers have said the game will save, basically. So if you're somewhere in deep space or a different sector, sleeping effectively saves your game. So having a bed on the ship that you're flying is a really good idea. Here are the doors. Press F to use. Open that. And there we are. Out in space. Let's just turn around. And again, there we are. I honestly still get a kick from doing this every single time. But you can have a look at this ship. There's a door on each side. Front laser guns there. I believe when this is a full game, there's like a cargo area. That's this kind of central hull bit. You may be able to attach like a cargo box. So if you wanted to run cargo around to make money that way, that would be an option. Personally speaking, this isn't the actual ship I would get at the start. If you were thinking of picking up a package now, there is a Aurora LN model. This is the MR, as you can see. There's an LN that has... Oh, it just jumped there for a reason. I don't know. That has two extra sets of guns that actually are on these back sort of wing areas. And a missile pod on top. And a larger engine as well. And I believe that's the same price as this one. So if you were thinking, I would... Oh, hello. Wow, I've never seen that before. <laughs> I think that's broken. <laughs> I've never seen one just disintegrate like that before. I think it wasn't happy where it was sat. Oh, wow. That's glitchy. This isn't actually online at all. This is all running locally. This is just a bug that's happened. Oh, wow. Look at those rings going off. So, yeah. This is alpha software. In its finest state. These, all these models are made to be destroyed by fighting and stuff in the future. So they do have the facility of being built in these sort of sections so that things can get blown apart. 
I've never seen one just fall apart though. That's kind of cool. So we're back in the hangar again. Just reloaded the hangar. Let's get back inside. This little simulator. And I'll show you what else there is to do in Star Citizen. Back into Arena Commander. And as you can see, there's a basic flight training. That's like a training thing that tells you what keys are and all the rest of it. It's worth doing. It's a bit buggy, if I'm honest, than the whole game is at the moment. Drone Sim is what we'd looked at, but also there's an option to play Vandal's Swarm, which is basically some AI fighters, aliens, are spawned into the area and you can blow them up. There's also a separate map called Dying Star, which is another place to play around. Another option is Classic Race. So this is an idea of, I guess, a sort of eSports side. Depending on what you want to do in the final game, there will be options to race ships around tracks with sort of gates in the sky. This is an option to play around in some of these maps. So let's just go with the default one. Let's just take that Mustang Delta. Let's hit launch. Welcome. So welcome to the Murray Cup. We are going to take a quick tour around this map. It's a kind of flying city. I'm going quite slow at the moment just so you can see the kind of environment. What you're meant to be doing is flying through these gates in the fastest time possible. With that momentum that I was talking about is not the easiest thing in the world because just because you turn doesn't mean that you're instantly going in that other direction. I'm taking it fairly steady, but I know from experience there's a little bit of a tight turn coming up. So if I go a bit fast and then turn, it's still sliding, it's still sliding, it's still sliding. Uh-oh. Um, uh, yes, well. Season racers will tell you that's actually the fastest way around that corner. You'll notice also, oh, hello, don't you dare, that there is the ability for the pilot to black out as well if you put too much stress on his or her neck. So you have to control a number of things. There are Checkpoint. different elements of the game that you have to be aware of. Oh, hello. Weapons. Oh, uh, yes. Sorry about whoever lived in that flat. Checkpoint. And of course, because it's a 3D world, it's not just all in a flat area. There are points that make you have to carve up through the sky. Checkpoint. Checkpoint. I would also say that this is not a racing ship. Checkpoint. There are ships much, much faster than this. Let's, let's see if I can use the afterburner without destroying that everything. There we go. Complete. Wow, there you go. 3 minutes 14. I'm sure that's some sort of world record. Oh, hello. See it drifting there? With the momentum of going around the corner. Let's see if I can do a tight turn. Oh, hello. Yeah, let's 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 never speak of that. Oh, oh. Oh, um. Yes, right, well. I do wonder which way I'm meant to be going now. Is it down here? Oh, there it is. So, lots of time to make up now, I'd argue. I'm sure that building wasn't there the first time through. Is that the... is that the... We just come through there. As you can see, I'm very good at this. Oh, there we go. I just found it. Checkpoint. I'll admit to not spending much time in this part of the game. 
that might be becoming slightly obvious to you right now. There are certainly of the ships that are available and in the works as well. There are racing variants. This Mustang here, there is a racing variant of this as well, all with a cool paint job and everything. Faster engines, but poorer weapons effectively. So the sports side of the game is certainly something that they want to get into, I think. I've got a feeling the ship isn't looking at its best. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Some bits snapped off. Other bits that should have probably snapped off with them didn't snap off. Ooh, yeah, that's that's not looking great. That's probably not going to buff out of the paintwork. But, as we also saw from that Aurora that we broke apart in space, this sort of modular idea lets them, or at least will let them, break apart ships in a more sort of realistic fashion. So this time, instead of doing Drone Sim, we will do Spectrum Match. This is public ranked play. You have actually an option to run a private match with friends as well, but it's the public match I'm interested in. There's like a way of setting up teams, contacts that you can invite straight into your, your game as well. And similar to last time, Battle Royale is, exactly as it sounds, basically deathmatch. There's the same maps to play around in. There's a capture the core mode, which is effectively capture the flag. It's pretty buggy to play. Free flight, exactly as you would imagine. Squadron battle, basically team deathmatch. And cooperative vandal swarm. I played a fair bit of that, actually. You are trying to get the best score possible out of all the AI that are spawned in the area. So it's PvE, but you're competing with other players who are trying to destroy the, the bad aliens before you do. High score wins, although you do get a fairly good score for just taking part, to be honest. So let's take a look at some of these public games. So welcome to Vandal Swarm. When it's black and white like this, it means that not everyone's ready for the match to start. And you're in a sort of holding lobby. Then once everyone's readied up, you can actually start. Welcome. Ship does this Your little sort of boot sequence now. every time you, you get in it. And we are off to the races. So, waves of bad dudes are spawned. There are multiple hostiles inbound. Although that tracks them as a target, that's actually another player. You're not allowed to fire on those. I'm just pressing the C button to lock onto the nearest target. Get a square reticule around the target you're locked on. And then a small orange arrow at the side of the screen if they aren't visible. So I'm going for that guy right in the middle. He's already been blown up. So it tracks the next one. You can see there's a number of different things going on in that targeting HUD. Zero hostile contacts remaining. The blue reticule in the middle that's moving around is my mouse pointer. Contact. Scanning. Scanning. This ship has what's known as gimbal weapons. That means that, to a degree, you can point the guns. But what the targeting does is show you where you need to aim. So you don't want to aim directly where the guns are, you want to aim where the computer tells you the guns should be. So, in this case, those small little squares, that blue square, that's where my secondary guns were firing on. So you don't really ever, apart from when you're head on, tend to aim directly at a target. It's all about tracking those blue reticules so that the shots lead properly and that you get that all important kill. But hold up, just before I let you go, I wanted to say a couple of things about the next episode of this Star Citizen video. We're going to look at why you're actually doing this fighting. There's a cool rental system that you get credits for and you can unlock cool stuff and rent ships and it's really neat. Also, I wanted to mention 
that if you are thinking of signing up for a Star Citizen, even if you're not thinking of buying a package yet, and you just wanted to sign up, you can get 5,000 in-game credits if you use my referral code. What's the referral code about? Well, basically, if you then went on and bought a package, then I would get a referral point. And if you get enough of those points, you get, like, cool little trinkets for your hangar and other stuff like that. So if you were thinking of signing up, even if you're thinking of maybe in the future, if you sign up now, use my referral code, I'll put it down in the video description as well, you'll get 5,000 in-game credits straight away. You don't even have to put money in, which is really cool. So stay where you're seated. I have a little trailer for the next part of this video coming up. And I will see you all in the next Star Citizen. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time. Take care.